Welcome to Living Hope. In today's message, Learning to Rest, Dr. McLuhan teaches how we can experience spiritual rest by leaning on the strength of our loving Heavenly Father. This weekend, we celebrate the hardworking people that built our country with a holiday known in America as Labor Day. In other countries, honor their workers on what's called May Day or International Workers Day. It is good to celebrate the work of men and women around the world. <clears throat> it's God's pleasure to bless the work of our hands. The Bible says, the Lord will open to you his good treasure and bless all the work of your hands. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 12. Honest work is a gift from God to bless the people of the world. Today we recognize hardworking people who are listening to this message. From the youngest age, Jesus was taught to work with his hands. I always loved working with my hands. It's just something about it that's so meaningful to me. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29 and 30. Jesus knew what he was talking about. Joseph taught Jesus how to work with wood and make custom yokes that fit animals well without chafing their neck. Jesus was a master craftsman. He also knew that workers and their animals needed rest from their labor. Our text today celebrates not only the need for physical rest, but the need for spiritual rest. Spiritual rest is a powerful theme in the Bible. We were never meant to earn our value in life from the work of our hands. Rest is found not by what we do, but rather by who we are. The Father loves how he made each of us, and he values you for who you are more so than what you or I can do for him. If you have a wheel that's spinning in your head that keeps telling you it's never enough, Jesus invites you today to find rest in him. Turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 11. And by the time we come to Matthew chapter 11, most of the religious leaders of that day have rejected the claim that Jesus made that he was God's Messiah, the anointed one. Jesus had already denounced the cities of Capernaum and Chorazin and Bethsaida because the people in those towns had saw the greatest number had seen the greatest number of miracles that Jesus had performed, and yet most of them did not believe in him. From then on, Jesus spoke in such a way that those who rejected him would miss his message, and those whose hearts were still open to him would get the message that Jesus wanted to give. So ask God to open your heart to receive what Jesus has to say in this important subject Matthew chapter 11, verse 25, we read, At that time Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the understanding and revealed them to the little ones, the little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. Matthew chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. <clears throat> When Jesus refers to those who are wise and understanding, he was talking about the religious leaders who had rejected him. And when he refers to the little ones, he is referring to people who have a childlike acceptance of his teaching. Jesus continues by saying, all things have been handed over to me by my father, and no one knows the son except the father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal himself. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 27. 
Today, Jesus chooses to reveal himself to those who are listening. In these two verses, the intimate relationship between Jesus and his Father is clearly seen. I hope it has not missed you that Jesus referred to God as his Father five times. That's a lot of repetition in just a few sentences. <clears throat> they knew each other intimately. The Father has given Jesus the choice to reveal this knowledge to the ones who have an open heart to receive this message. If your heart is closed to what I have just said, you will think I am speaking nonsense. But if your heart is open, you will understand that God is talking to you right now. And he has chosen through Jesus to reveal himself to you. Would you like to have a revelation about the relationship between the father and his son today? If your answer to that question is yes, then these next words are for you. Jesus said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28. I've listened to many, many stories of people who have testified that for them, these words are the most beautiful words in the Bible. Uh, these ones have said that they have tried all their life to please God, but they have found that their good works and deeds were not enough to feel accepted by God. Some people beat themselves. Some people starve themselves. Some people walk on fire or nails. And after doing all of these things, they don't feel that they have earned God's approval. And many turn to their leaders and say, what do I have to do to feel God's approval? And the answer always comes back, try harder. Try harder. That is not what Jesus said. He said, try less. Trust me. Give up trying and try trust instead. Jesus invites all who are listening to these words to come to him and to find rest. Now, Jesus is not talking about a vacation or a holiday. He's talking about rest for our spirit. Jesus wants to stop that wheel that's spinning in your head that says you're not good enough and you've not done enough to please God. Listen to these beautiful words. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29 and 30. The yoke of Jesus is light compared to the weight of trying to please God with your own effort. I remember before I was a follower of Jesus, I thought to myself, oh, it's so hard to follow Jesus. It's just I didn't realize how easy it is to follow him once his spirit begins to work in our life and lightens the load. Jesus invites us to learn from him how to be gentle and how to walk humbly with our God. How different that is from religions that add yokes and weights and weights upon weights and burden people down with rules and laws. Jesus invites us to partner with him and learn from him how to find favor and acceptance with God. Uh, the devil does his best to try to convince people that it's too difficult to be a follower of Jesus or that the price to follow Jesus is just too high. That's one of the great lies of Satan. Carrying the weight of sin can never be compared with the experience of the weight of glory that comes upon our life. It is a beautiful thing to see people resting under the weight of God's glory. Have you ever seen that? People carrying the glory of God carry a peace and a presence. And sometimes the glory falls in meetings. It's so strong and powerful. People fall down in his presence. I've had the blessing of experiencing this. And some people can't even get up until the glory lifts off of them. It doesn't depart from them. It just lifts some of the weight so people can function again. I've met people who've been 
under the weight of glory for two or three, four, five days, can't even do anything until God does something in their hearts with that weight, cleans and purifies. And when you have a powerful encounter with God, people like that often go on to do great things for the Lord, carry a weight they never thought they could carry because of the power and presence of God on their lives. Uh, have you noticed that some people find pleasure in serving the Lord? just seems to be easy. They make things look easy. It's like, how is it so easy for that one? And others find serving the Lord a duty or a dread or a chore. They find themselves chafing at the neck. The good news is that Jesus never intended for ministry to chafe at your neck, but rather to be light and easy. The key to the difference between chafing or delighting is learning to walk in step with Jesus. It's a powerful thing to watch an old bull teach a young ox how to wear a yoke. The young ox can try to resist the yoke, but the old bull will just pull him along. You can dig your feet in, but the old bull will just drag you along until you get tired of being drugged. Get up and walk. A young ox may try to Say, so, well, I'm stronger and younger and faster and try to get ahead of the old bull. The old bull will just lean back and dig in, and you'll be pushing against that yoke, and you see that, see that uh, young ox just chafing and then foaming at the mouth, but he can't do anything. The young ox may try to pull to the left or the right, but the old bull knows the path and just keeps plodding along. One time I had a personal experience with riding two very powerful animals in Thailand. I visited an elephant park. You ever visited an elephant park? It's a fascinating place to visit. I had the opportunity to ride an elephant alone through a forest. Now the elephant knew that in certain ways along that path there was somebody waiting to give him or her a banana. So he didn't care if I was on him or off of him. He knew the path. And that elephant, even though I felt like I was in control, I had no control, is that right? Didn't have reins, couldn't do anything, couldn't say, whoa, couldn't say, hurry up. We just went along at the elephant's pace. And soon enough, we came to uh, somebody up a tree in the forest that had some bananas. And, and then he moved on to the next one. What a joy it is. When we got through the end of that forest ride, we dismounted. And then there was a a cart with a bull uh, waiting to take us back to we all, where we started the ride. And so I got on that cart, and the bull didn't care about my weight, didn't turn to the left or the right, didn't have a driver. It was just me. I didn't have a whip or anything. I just sat on the cart and enjoyed the ride, and soon enough we were back at the cart. Neither one of these animals cared about my size. They were trained to do what they did without any effort, and I was just along for the ride. And Jesus would like to take you along for the spiritual ride of your life if you'll learn to walk in step with him. This experience has helped me to have a deeper appreciation of what Jesus meant when he said these words, my yoke is easy and my burden is is light. Ask God to really be help you believe that and not say, ah, oh, that's just poetry. It's true when we learn how to walk in step with Jesus. Move at the pace that Jesus moves and life will go so much easier. Uh, how many of you have struggled with trying to get ahead of Jesus and pull Jesus along? And Jesus is by no means a bull but he is stronger than any bull, and he knows how to not hurry up because you're in a hurry. And if you'll learn to walk with him, life will go better. Some try to lag behind. How many people have said to me over the years at Ingleside, I know God was talking to me. I know God was saying to me. And you finally got in step with Jesus. He has his strength makes up for your weaknesses. Now, if you think about it, <clears throat> that the best way to walk in step with Jesus or to walk in step with a yoke is to be just slightly 
a half step behind Jesus. In that way, Jesus is pulling the load and you're just shouldering the lighter part of the burden. You push ahead, you're carrying the whole load and wondering why things are not going so well. So his strength is made perfect in our weakness. What a beautiful illustration this is of walking in step with him. I release to you the gift of finding joy and delight in ministry as you walk in step with Jesus and do the things that you know that he has called you to do. I release to you the blessing of finding ministry effortless with the strength that he provides. I release to you a revelation that Jesus and the Father are one. Remember we read it five times. Some watching have said in your spirit, no, that Jesus and God cannot be the same. I don't understand it. I'm reporting it to you. Ask God to help you to believe it. I invite you to accept the invitation that Jesus gave. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I believe there are people in the house that are feeling the weight of life in their spirits today in a way that you'd wish you'd not feel. The invitation from Jesus today is to give that weight to him and ask him to help you to carry it. I invite you to come to Jesus and give your burden to him. I free you from trying to prove to God that you are good enough to be accepted by him. I believe there are people watching this message today whom Jesus is revealing the truth about this message to you. You've tried all of your life to find acceptance by God. For some, you've seen for the first time that Jesus was more than a prophet. He is who won, he is the one who walked in the favor and with the favor of God upon his life. He is the one who can teach us how to walk in God's favor. I invite you to ask Jesus to forgive you for all the sins you have committed. Ask Jesus to the lift the weight of your sin off of your back. Ask him to fill you with the presence of his Holy Spirit. Say with me, Jesus, thank you for dying for me on the cross and my place to pay for my sins and for inviting me to walk with you in the favor of God. If you just prayed with me to accept Jesus as your Savior, write to me and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. Father, thank you that you know us and you know how to show us your peace and your love and your joy. And you can pull the heavy, heavy loads of our life while we enjoy your fellowship and your companionship. Forgive us for the times that we have tried to push ahead, to do things in our own strength, even things that were good, but we try to do them without your help, without your fellowship, without your power. So release us from anxiety and stress right now and show us the new way. We want to walk with you, Father, and experience your joy and peace of you working with us in the work that you've given us to do in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.